So Reese, we've come to the Clint Peninsula in North Wales. Um, you're farming here. And I suppose we know you a long time and you've made a lot of progress in your dairying career. Would you mind maybe give a, a background to where you started and your yeah. journey so far? Yeah, we probably started the journey uh, good more than 20 years ago, 25 years ago probably. Um, we started in New Zealand where we were, we were working, myself and Kelly, um, full time on dairy farms there. Uh, in Southland, um, very happy there. Learned a lot, especially you know Southland is very similar to to North Wales. Even I, th I think where we are now is is kinder than Southland, especially the winters. But anyway, it was a good base for learning the system we're on now. And basically, we came home 20 years ago, started share milking with David Winfinch just down the road from from here. Um, set up a dairy unit there, and the business progressed from. We start. We had a good, an ex exceptionally good base. We were very fortunate with David. That was a, quite a, quite a large scale operation. So we started off with the eight hundred cows, and then developed that business with him up to. I think we were milking sixteen hundred cows on on two farms. Um, and then we got offered uh, the chance to buy this farm. Exactly, well, it's 11 years ago now, 2012. Um, so we bought it and we converted it into a dairy. It was a beef and sheep unit um, at that point. And we converted it into a dairy farm in 2000 and started milking it in 2013. Um, it's a, this farm here, Turgan, it's 70 hectares. Um, and we milk, historically, for, we have been milking about 280 to 300 cows on here. Um, this year we've dropped it down to two, 250 cows, uh, just to take the pressure off a bit. Um, but this is part of, um, it's one unit, one unit, then we have an, another four units. Um, another two units on the peninsula here. And another two units on Anglesey, uh, again still in North Wales. And probably on combined cows on all five farms would be about 1,800 to 2,000. Um, they're, a, they're a mixture of tenanted farms where we've taken them on and as you know, beef and sheep farms and converted them. And um, there's one share milking operation uh, we have with, a, with an, another local farmer which also is a beef and sheep farm. Um, and he converted it and we actually, we just put the cows in there and management and uh, do a share milking uh, agreement with him. And that all developed from, probably from 2013 to now, this side of the business. So yeah, we've seen quite a lot of growth. We've seen a lot of growth actually in the last 20 years. Um, Probably would probably starting to stabilise now. Yes. And so, in terms of say your structure, the farm manager, have they an involvement in the business in terms of ownership or equity? Typically. Uh, yes. Um, historically, uh, you know, we've we've had we've had a, a, we've always had a base probably of five farms. Yeah. Um, I would say they, they haven't been the same five farms because we had share milking operations where we would last, we'd go in there for five years and they come to an end. We've had a tenanted farm for five years, that's, you know, come to an end as well. But anyway, yes, we, on, on all, the, mostly on the farms we'd have, whoever's on that farm actually has a percentage of that business. And that would vary from as little as 5% up to 50%. Um, and, and that's in the in terms of cow ownership, then, is it? Yeah, or, cow yeah. cow ownership, or actually they'd be they they would be a joint director in that limited company. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, we couldn't do what we could what we do without having that structure, you know, without having that buy-in. Um, 
So basically, they're not the farm manager, they're actually the farmer on that farm. Yeah. And I guess it's something that you've been able to replicate what's in New Zealand. And yes, that, uh, that was the plan from from day one, really. You know, I just I went over to New Zealand first of all when I was early twenties, and I was just you know taken aback by by the, you know their system of how it was. It's never easy, but it was quite fluid in the way you could go through. You know, start off working on a dairy farm. You'd go into a lower order contract milking, then you go into share pa- share milking, and then onto farm ownership. And if you were good enough, and he was, if you you know, uh, determined enough, there was an end, wasn't there? Isn't there? I yeah. don't know if it's as fluid there now as it was, you know, going back twenty to thirty years ago. But um, and I was hooked on that idea from from early on. Um, and I just thought it was a fantastic way of getting getting into and and getting young people into into an industry that we actually need to keep bringing young people into. Yes. And it strikes me you've always been able to get people to get involved in your businesses. Do you have had that ability? Yeah, very fortunate. You know, we've we've always been fortunate. You know, we're good people. Um, I think North Wales here in general is a very very good area for. You know, for staff, you know, it's just young people. They they just want to get into farming. Mm. It, it it is it, it's. I remember when I was growing up. Farming was viewed as uh, you know as a, as a last resort, really. Um, people would always discourage you from going into farming. I don't want to, you know, it's manual labour, hard work. But actually, you know. Farming is, you know, you need intelligent people coming into farming. You know, it's not easy. Um, the staff that do come to you, are they from the farming background as large or...? No, no, no. Very few would be from from actual dairy farming background. And do you find that an advantage, that they've got no preconceived systems um, or ways of doing things? or? got a blank sheet to start yeah, with. Yeah, probably it might be. Um, I think they come in with the right attitude and, and just having that bit of an ambition, um, willing to work hard. Um, you know, there's always a, there's, a, there's always an opportunity for somebody like that. Yeah. So, Reese, if an 18 or 19 year old comes to you, Typically, what you know, where's the career progression for them? Will you put them put them in, say, a second in command, or or typically kind of how does that have it evolve? Or yeah, we, we start them off. We you know we put them on on a unit, you know, and and see to just see how they get on really. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had I've had a few re- really good young guys come along very quick. Um, I think the youngest I've had was he, he was 18, 18 to 19 when, when we put him in charge of an actual farm. But somebody like that, you could actually you can actually tell from when when he was 16. You can tell pretty quick. Yes. And a lot of his people, you know, just people skills. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. You know how to deal with people because what we do, you know, especially on the larger units. You know, it's the success of an operation is always the people skills and the people management. And yeah. Of course, they've got to have the stock skills have got to be there. Um, but people management is pretty massive. Yeah. So just in terms of the mix of farms you have, you are you doing outright leases, or are you doing kind of um, share farm agreements where the landowner is involved as well? Yeah. The the leases, as we call them, farm business tenancies, um, they would be on uh, long-term tenancies, you know, 15 to 20 years. Um, and to be honest with you, when you, when you take a, a farm on, you have to have a minimum of 15 years just to get your investment back. Because um, most of, well, all the time, there's a lot of, a lot of spending work to be done. 
And are you typically putting that money in that the, that inv capital investment initially for tracks and yes. parlour? Are you typically yeah. putting that yeah. money if, in? If, if we get tenancies and the long term, we just put the investment in. Yeah. And we write it off over 15 years. Um, what what is the process of that? You know what if you took on a new new farm, what is the first thing really that you you look at doing? What is the just talk us through the process of converting it to dairy? Um, probably the first step is just having a good look at it and seeing if it's um, suitable for what we want. Um, location. Uh, what's the potential there? How many we can milk there? Um, and then yeah, if it, if 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 it goes ahead, basically the first, you know, the fir first year would be just about probably first thing we do put tracks in, tracks and water and fence it. Um, usually we we start every farm we've done we've started them with just heifers, so we put in, you know, we buy bulling heifers and put bulling heifers on the farm just to get it going, just to get the grazing going. Right. Um, and. Towards the end of that first year, we'd, we'd, we'd put the capital in, you know, the, the milking parlour, the, the yard, whatever needs to be done in the yards. Um, some, it, it depends on the situation, you know, ideally we set everything, we'd like to set everything up day one, but, you know, we, we've got financial constraints, you can't get enough capital, so, you know, we start off where, on, well, on, on most farms we've done, we've started off just, just tracks, water, Good milking parlour. That's you know that, that that's crucial. You know, we'd out winter a lot. Yeah. Um, so we we probably do two three years maybe more out wintering. You know, we dry the cow cows off early, and over time, you know, all the farms now have got winter facilities, um, cubicles, cubicle housing, calf rearing shed, and the calf um, where the cows can actually calve. You know, loose housing. Yeah. Um, and that every farm we have now is pretty much identical. Um, so it just makes it, especially when you got, you need to set everywhere up where they, you know, it's, they're quite easy to manage in the end. Because especially when you're taking on farms where there's a lot of our wintering and things, they're not easy farms to manage. Um, you know, you'd be carting cows all over the place. You know, you'd have mobs of cows here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so the that is the process really getting to that point as quickly as we can you know as finances allow us and and starting off with bulling heifers that's the preferred route just so it gives you time to progress and improve the rest of the farm or is that the preferred preferred route because of capital outlay i think <clears throat> i it, it's just say say now we take a farm on and you need 300 cows on there it's quite a lot of work finding 300 in milk cows or 300 cows to go on a farm, isn't it? You'd have to buy in from several different. Well, I just think, as far as um, you know, diseases and things, and I just think you know, putting the gang of heifers together, we'd usually have a percentage of all those heifers ourselves. You know, yeah. we might have yeah. half of them in the system spare. You know, between all the farms and things, um, and then we'd just top them up. You know. Yeah. And then you get five, probably say three to four years of pretty hassle-free. Um, you, you, you're not going to have any milk fever. You, there's a lot of advantage to it. Mm. The big disadvantage, of course, is the volume in the first year. Yeah. Yeah. We'd be probably around sixty-five to seventy-five percent of actual, you know, mature volume. Yeah. Um, but by the second year, that jumps up quite quick. You know, second, third year, we'd, we'd be not far off. So it, it does come up. we just got to plan for that reduced yield. But there's, there's also your herd deduction rates would be a lot lower. Yeah. So you need a lot less cows coming in as, as replacements and things. And, um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I don't think I would do it any other way unless I could find a whole herd somewhere um, where I would actually know the background and things. Mm. Your your system of milk production then, Rhys, uh, would it be fair to say you've one kind of system that you replicate across all your farms? That's yeah. Pretty much? Yeah, carbon got exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what's the, maybe start to the stocking rate, what typical stocking rate will you go at? Um, 
it's been at four, you know, historically, uh, four on the milking platforms, um, and then we'd have a lot of offline ground. Say that, you know, this farm, we've got the same amount of hectares away from this farm to carry, you know, feed in for them, you know, for winter feed and buffering and things. Um, last couple of years, we've actually dropped the stock rate um, and the stock rate now varies between 3.3 .3 up to 3.6 everywhere. Just take a bit of pressure off, really. Right. Um, and also, the, I think this, you know, we, we are getting more prolonged dry spells at some periods, you know, from May right through till October. Um, and it's just trying to you know, go through the summer a bit better. So, yeah, that, that yeah, so stocking rates would be set about, you know, 3.3, 3. 3 2.6 calving everywhere starts 7th of February um, why that date say um, yeah good question I think it, it suits uh, the most of the farms it, it works perfectly well we can you know and if you get quite a, quite a kind spring you know we get through to probably 10th of, between 5th of April and 10th of April and then grass kicks off quite good. Um, there's actually one farm now we're actually looking at quite closely where I, yeah, last couple of years I think it's behind, it'll be behind this farm probably two weeks. Mm. Um, so we might drop that farm next year, we look quite closely at it again and we might drop it, probably drop it two to three weeks, maybe calve towards the end of February there. Um, but yeah. I, I, it's what on on in in this location. It's worked for the last twenty years quite well. Yeah. So yeah, your level of supplementation then say you know what are they what are they being fed as they calve and up to say magic day in April or May. Um, typically they'd be on between two kilos and four kilos a meal in in the milk in, in the milking parlor. Uh, it depends exactly on the spring with silage. Um, some springs we'd get away without putting silage in at all, um, and yeah, it just just depends on how how things are going. Um, supplementation would be roughly historically we'd be feeding about five hundred kilos of silage dry matter over the course of that milking season, yeah, yeah, and between between half a ton a meal and probably one point three tons a meal, and that depends a lot on you know of course the weather, grass growth milk price a bit as well um, so yeah okay cow type then say what's your preferred cow type over the, few, the last few years um, it's, it's all kiwi cross they're all crossbreds um, we used a bit of Frisian last year um, ideally I want to have the cows about five five hundred five ten live weight um, we weigh the cows every year, um, and prediction, you know, would be around 500 kilos of milk solids. Uh, so we need, yeah, that's the big thing, is getting a kilo of milk solid for a kilo of live weight. Okay. And what sort of litres and percentages would that be? Litres-wise, it would be, if it, again, it would, it's in between probably 5'3", five, 5'4", five, up to about 5'8", 50 in that window. Yeah. Again, depends on the, on how much we how much feed we're putting into them. Yeah. Um, this year we're not going to put. Yeah. Well, it depends how, how how long this dry spell carries on. But the plan was just to feed them half a ton. So we're looking at probably five, five three, five four. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and all your milk sold on a solid contract. Yeah. All the milk goes to on off every farm goes to U three dairies. Um, and it's a mixture of a of, of of powder contract and liquid contract. Right. In terms of AI there, Reese looking at these cows here, what would you be putting any of these cows in calf here to? These What's are all they, they've been uh, served with LIC um prospect bulls. Yeah. Um we do six weeks of AI. Um we've done sex semen this year for the first time. Um, and it's gone touch wood, very pleased with it, it's gone go well, and then we just put in Belgian blue and everything else. Um, and we put the bulls in, for th we've, we've been historically for the last five years, 10, 10 weeks calving. 
we're dropping that to nine weeks this year. Um, empty rates would be between four and seven. Um, so, but I think we we've been breeding. You know, there's twenty years of plus of mainly LIC genetics. Yeah. Um, Does every farm breed its own replacements, or the replacements just bred from? Every farm breeds its own replacements. Right. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is different. On, on here because we've got a one unit that's very close to here is, is only about four miles down the road we took on two years ago so we actually run uh the two farms are run as one basically there's 500 cows um basically half on here and half on the other one um and we keep the best cows on here and we breed from these and on the other ones we put belgium we just put beef on them yeah. Um, so all the repla all the replacements for the two farms come from from this one. Uh, yeah, on the others, yeah, the, every everybody breeds their own replacements. Yeah. What sort of percentage replacement rate would that be per year? Um, we be it's about it's between fifteen and eighteen percent. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of old cows in this herd actually, um, but. We're still going, we're still it's milking, we're still cows. getting calves. So yeah. uh, you were mentioning recently about consolidation and maybe fine tuning things. What, what would that focus be? Or what kind of things you're trying to improve? Um, it's probably just going back to the basics, to be honest with Bertie. Now um, it's just concentrating on, you know, because when you're when you're busy, you know, developing farms, taking farms on. A lot, a lot of your focus gets taken off the the day-to-day nitty-gritty, um, and probably I'm just, you know, shifting all the focus back now. You know, all the farms are finished. That's development. They're done. Yeah. Um, so now it's just about, you know, folk getting back. You know, focusing on, on on, you know, getting more efficiency out of out of these basically, um, and. Yeah, because probably the system, it's it's very it is a simple system, and it is is easy to manage if things are done at the right time and are done well. Um, so yeah, just 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 getting the focus back on that really. Yeah. With the, the spring carving system is the system you've adopted. Did you ever consider? A different system, or if you in the future, would you consider it? Yeah, we we actually ran ran the farm for five years. Um, we took on, and that was an we an all year round calving farm. Um, and because we took the the contract the milk contract on on that farm as well, it, it was a it, the, there was a supermarket contract on it, and we had to you know supply milk three hundred and sixty five yeah. days of the year. So we 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 did we we ran it, but we just put these cows in there um, with with you know and graze them and graze them hard um, and just exactly the same principles as we would on a spring unit um, we served them all again to beef and it worked well um, it worked very well yeah I wouldn't be I'd be quite happy running running other types of systems it wouldn't right. it wouldn't actually bother me you know an autumn calving herd or whatever but it would have to a lot of it, if if it would suit the farm, um, the focus still on grass and yeah, exactly, yeah, that's yeah, efficient. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, efficient and friendly. just keeping it simple, really. Mm. Yes. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, what type, you, what type of system it is, you know, it's the same basics. And. Profitability of the different systems. Do you think there's a lot of difference between once you're on a simple type system? Is there a lot of difference? I don't the think there is. Right. Yeah, okay. I don't think there is. If 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 everything's done right. Yeah. Um, and I guess the capital might be a bit higher for an autumn block yeah, than it is yeah, a spring yeah. block. That that's the big benefit with 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 spring is you know you, you can you can you can start off with basically. Tracks, water, and milking power. Right. What what sort of for someone to go into spring milk then from a conversion? 
is there a rough figure cost per head it would be to get up and running? Ooh. Yeah, I, w I would imagine it's more expensive now. Right. And you'd be north of probably £2,000 a cow. That's excluding buildings, like excluding winter housing. Yeah, now, yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 When you put everything into consideration. Yeah, so that's tracks, water, reseeding, buying the cow and milking parlour. Yeah, or excluding the cows. Yeah. Excluding the cows, yeah. right. Yeah. And then um, you'd say you'd buy bully neppers anyway. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you if you're a, if you're a beef and sheep farming looking to go into dairying, um, what I've seen what I've seen in the past, the the stocks there already. The beef stock is usually quite high value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can usually s s sell a, a beef cow and calf. And buy two to three more, yeah. maybe for hot boiling heifers, yeah. maybe yeah. If you, at the right point. Yeah. So you're actually trading in the stock. Is the the, the value of the stock is, uh, yeah. That's a big positive. A big help. Yeah. 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 And a good stockman as well. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. And what I've seen as well is because they 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 they're, they're used to working to. To, to a season, yes. To the spring season, and, and you know they're actually very adaptable to 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 the you know to, yeah to, yeah to making the spring system work. Sure. Thanks for your time, Reese. Today, yeah, we learned a lot, and you've had a fabulous career over the last twenty years, and you've helped a lot of people on the road as well. I think, which is a huge thing as well, you know, which is a credit to you. Um, and uh, I think that's the real standout thing for me for you, for what I've seen you've done with other people, and obviously David as well along the road. But um, I'm sure there's another 20, 30 years of doing the same again. <laughs> so, so I wish you well with it, and thanks for having us out here today. Cheers, Bertie, thank you. Thanks, thank Matthew. Thank you.